morning good morning good morning everyone jlr investigates come on in everyone a lot to talk about sebastian rogers is still missing 15 year old sebastian rogers was reported missing from his biological mother katie proudfoot february 26 2024 a lot to talk about folks because there's things going on right now um search is continuing law enforcement is meeting at the uh it's called the long hollow church baptist church they're meeting there today and it's only it's i'm told my sources have told me it's only for sumner county and tbi officials uh that's it no other people can participate in this search this church and i'm going to show you the map it's a little bit farther down than um where the prophets live hendersonville uh shackle island area of tennessee uh where is sebastian where is sebastian uh the sebastian army is growing there is massive amounts of people here now putting out sebastian's face this is not going away ladies and gentlemen at all uh it's just it's getting amplified to the fullest at this point uh vinnie politan just had seth rogers on his uh, uh show seth rogers just spoke to nancy this morning Nancy Grace just spoke to Seth Rogers yesterday. Another big TikToker named Justin from TikTok talked to Seth Rogers. There are a lot of people with big, big platforms that are spreading around Sebastian's message and, and, and using their platforms to bring awareness to this case. Oh, it's not going away anytime soon. We are a Sebastian army that uh, has a Facebook group that consists at this time 22,000, almost 22,500 members in our Facebook group. I keep sharing this Facebook group. Please join because there's a lot of activity that's going to be going on this weekend in the Hendersonville area. So if you get the chance, folks, please, please join this group. It is called The Mysterious Disappearance of Sebastian Rogers, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 22,000, 22,300 people are in this group. I can say uh, that the group has uh, said, there's members that said that this weekend, and I'm trying to get the time, I'm trying to get the time, folks, but this weekend there is going to be a rally in support of Sebastian. Uh, people bringing signs. I, I don't necessarily would say it's a protest. It looks like a rally. Uh, to bring awareness to Sebastian, and this is going to occur at the movie theater. I'm looking to get the actual address, but uh, it's uh, the entrance to Streets of Indian Lakes is where the shopping mall and movie theater are located. Uh, there is people going to be out there uh, this weekend. I, I myself, will be in Tennessee uh, by tomorrow. I am leaving uh, shortly. Uh, to uh, go to there to bring awareness, use our platform on JLR Investigates, and keep it going. Keep it going. At the same time, folks, there's a new article out. Uh, you know, neighbors of the Proudfoots, you know, are, are are very on edge right now. They're very on edge, and and they really don't like what's going on uh, with the whole situation. The whole situation with how you know this case is still a mystery the whole situation where people are coming into that neighborhood uh with drones and driving by and it's 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 volunteer searchers it, the, even the law enforcement being around their presence is making uh residents in that area edgy right people people are driving past the proudfoots i've heard that people pr are honking horns uh, you know, just going around taking pictures of, of neighbor, other neighbors' homes, coming up with every scenario possibly to, um, you know, figure out what happened to Sebastian. Yeah, there's an article out, and they're not they're not happy. Some residents, other ones that I've spoken to, have said the Proudfoots literally fled their home. They're gone. And while a law enforcement who was out there extensively yesterday doing these searches down Long Hollow long hollow pike right long hollow road long hollow pike long hollow pike while they're out there by the uh beach cumberland presbyterian church and the high school and uh, along you know by the shackle island fire station the proudfoots leave they haven't been seen since easter folks they haven't been seen since easter so uh you know they were four or five days since easter right and they know the proudfoots know 
there are searches going on and choose not to even, you know, be out there in support of law enforcement looking for their son. Now, in fairness, they could have been told to leave or they could have been told to just stay away, back away. Proudfoot's lawyer, if they have one, and rumors of speculation that they have a lawyer out there, uh, has maybe told them to, hey, stay, stay away. Zip it. Zip it. Nancy Grace has called Chris Proudfoot out again. Remember the polygraph? Remember Chris was talking about he would take a polygraph? Nancy Grace is claiming that she even arranged it, even had her people, producers, ready to go to where Chris Proudfoot works to take this lie detector test, and Chris has been ducking. He's not taking it, which is very interesting too. Uh, there's rumors out there the Proudfoots are planning to sell their home. As of this time, I don't see any home for sale on any Zillow or uh, any of those other realty sites. What in the world is going on here? Then, then folks, we're hearing uh, from Seth, who is saying some very serious accusations what the Proudfoots did to Sebastian while Sebastian is, was in their home. Serious stuff, folks. I don't know if you listened to the interview with Justin from TikTok, but it's very, very bad. And it just paints a picture about this whole, it, now it's just, it's, it's, it can, it, you know, we all care and everyone's out there, but this is turning into just a, con, just a minefield of like, whoa, wow, whoa, what the, what is going on here? How come no one is held uh, accountable and how come Sebastian has still not been found while authorities are keeping things to the vest? They're keeping things, right? Is this foul play? Did Sebastian wander off? Was Sebastian kidnapped? Are there bad actors or actor involved with this case? It's wild, folks, but I'll be there. I'll be out there, boots on the ground, uh, more or less covering the case. I don't even know where to start here. I don't even need, know where to start. Also, another uh, volunteer organization, they call themselves the Uvalde Foundation for Kids. They're putting out tweets saying that they're uh, going to redirect their search to Juneau, Alaska. To Juneau, Alaska. Which is very, very interesting because, you know, the Proudfoot's parents, Kathy and Terry Bowersox, right after Sebastian went missing, they went on a trip to Alaska. But I also have some... New information and new details about this trip. A supposed family friend of the Bower Sox have been speaking out. We'll start with that. We'll start with that. Remember we talked about on JLR Investigates right after Sebastian went missing that um, the, the Bower Sox took a trip to Alaska. Everybody's like, how dare they? Why would they go to Alaska? Their grandson's missing. Why would you just, you know, leave, go out? Well, it seems like I got some information about this. Someone is claiming they know them. And I looked on this person's profile, and they are, in fact, friends with the Bower Sox. So we're going to get some key details right here about this Alaska trip because supposedly it was already a planned cruise. And I don't think they flew or uh, drove. They flew. But we'll see. What do you think? Check this out. What do you think, folks? So uh, this uh, person, Austin Davis, in our group, in our group, we have a big, big, big group dedicated to finding out what happened to Sebastian Rogers. Hi, your information is incorrect. First, the Alaska trip was a pre-planned cruise. I assure you my friends did not drive to Alaska from Middle Tennessee. Friends definitely defending them makes them look even guilt more guilty. Why do they need defense at all? That's what someone replied. Austin Davis says, and it also was not the day after Sebastian went missing. His grandmother was searching and leading efforts just like everyone else hoping to find Sebastian. And who are you to defend this or can you not prove it? I'm close with the families, friends of Sebastian's grandparents. So I just respectfully comment when interested. So was this a cruise? Was this an already planned cruise? Because people say, well, you know, Terry Bower Sox works for Motor Coach or some sort of uh, company dealing with charters and buses. Uh, was he, you know, you know, what's going on here? Did they drive to Alaska? Well, according to the family friend, 
It was a pre-planned cruise. Now, think about this, folks. You have a cruise planned. You have a trip planned. Disney World, Universal, Las Vegas. Where do you like to go on your vacation? Say you got a vacation that you dumped a bunch of money. Maybe you can get your money back. Maybe you can't. But imagine your loved one, your significant loved one, someone really close to your family member, spouse, child, grandchild, any of that. Imagine they go missing. And in the midst of a missing and a giant search, you say, well, I'm not going to, you know, we're just going to continue to go on our trip. How does that even look? Does that, do you think that's right or do you think that's wrong? Or does it depend on the circumstances? Because I'm like, whoa. The urgency to find Sebastian was heavy at that time. I'm told law enforcement from multiple agencies all out there. Even the, even even Kathy Bowersox was putting stuff out. Drive around, look around, find him. Angela says, stop saying it's his grandparents. Yeah. The Bowersox. His grand, their grandchild. Their grandchild went missing. Their grandchild went missing. And they took a trip to Alaska on a pre-planned cruise. Now, you know, going on a cruise, a lot of money. I bet you taking a cruise to Alaska is like five, ten grand, right? Baby doll even goes as far as saying step grandparents. True too. Grandparents, step grandparents. Nevertheless, part of Sebastian's life. Chris's parents or Chris's mother and stepdad. It's so wild in this case. This this case has a stepdad to step parents to step parents to step people, all types of step people involved with this case. Because Chris's side of the family, they're all broken up. We've already spoken to Terry Bowersox, who is a uh, uh, estranged son of uh, of Terry Bowersox Sr., Terry Bowersox Jr., who said, I got away from that family. You got Katie's mom is a mess. She's serving probation in Virginia for 99 years for malicious wounding, uh, served time in prison. Uh, the Proudfoot, or Proudfoot himself has been married multiple times, stepchild, stepperson's, everything is step. It's like no foundation, like really. And I'm not saying step, anything step is bad. I'm just saying with this particular case, it's like, we don't know who's who, it's confusing. In this case, you got a biological uh, father that is out there extensively. Whatever you think about Seth Rogers and whatever your doubts are and your suspicions, because there's rumors going around about them. Come on, let's be real. I've seen court papers. Okay. But the guy is out there looking for his son. And to me, that shows an innocent person. Unless we, there's the biggest scam uh, uh, in ever you know, bamboozled ever, the biggest, you know, hoax there ever was. But Seth Rogers, I've seen his eyes, and he's looking for his child. He's not faking. He's serious. He wants answers. He's genuine. I see it. You can see people. You can see people. You can see their faces. He's looking for his son, and he's using all available means necessary to find his son. He is going on almost every platform he can go to he reaches out to platforms and says more or less get me on get me on and shares and other people these platforms are bringing him on and he's sharing and every time he talks he shares a little bit more information he's he's doing what a parent should do he's trying to get law enforcement to be proactive in this and they are we're not going to knock law enforcement just because they haven't solved this case yet. There's a, probably a lot of complex things about this. Probably a lot of complex things about this situation. But Seth Rogers is doing exactly what a parent should do if their loved ones go missing. Proudfoots, on the other hand, are not doing, in my mind, what people should do when their child goes missing. Particularly Katie. Particularly Katie. If you don't want to search out there and look for your son, at least go out there and give the law enforcement donuts and lemonade and show your morale and go out there and shake hands and be out there to support law enforcement trying to use all their resources and putting their lives on the line to try to find Sebastian. 
What does she do instead? It seems like every time there's these searches, remember, remember the volunteers two weekends ago were out there searching down there by Old Hickory Lake. And what did the prophets do? They fled. They left using threats as an excuse and left and, and, and left and went literally hundred over 100 miles away. Now, law enforcement is re, re-upping and redoing searches in that area. And what do the prophets do? They leave. Make that make sense, people. And they want to know why people think they're guilty. Prophets want to know why everyone's picking on them online and saying uh, they're guilty. Well, actions speak louder than words. Remember, Prophet Chris, he got the Cajun Navy in there. Prophet didn't even participate in any searches that I've seen, subsequent searches. And we didn't even know about this case for the first week because it was kind of hush-hush to the Prophet's finally came out almost like a week into it to give their first me interview. We know what was going on. But they are out there. They're out there. They were out there yesterday. They're out there again today. And I put this out and I thought this is an interesting concept here. You know, they're they're going through the neighborhoods. The people are going through the neighborhoods, folks. Searching. And these are like more like uh, professional searchers. But I put out the tweet. I said, I'm starting to think that this that this search is about eliminating the theory that Sebastian Rogers wandered off without shoes. Most detective work involves eliminating possible scenarios until you reach the truth. And that's what it could be. Because, you know, the prophets are very adamant about Sebastian leaving with a flashlight and without shoes. So is law enforcement doing this as part of their thing is they're doing this to eliminate the theory that Sebastian wandered off without shoes. Because if you wander off without shoes, folks, you ain't going far in that area. If you did wander off with shoes. So the chances are finding Sebastian would be probably without within a certain mile radius of the home he supposedly vanished from, which I don't even think he returned home. And I expressed that. But anyway, law enforcement today has been mobilizing at the Long Hollow Baptist Church. Now, this is where the prophets live right here. And for a while, they were, uh, here's what's interesting. Here's what's interesting, folks. When this was all going on, well, yesterday, prophets live right here. Let me get that. Prophets live right in here in this area. This is the Shackle uh, uh, Island Volunteer Fire Department. They did a lot of searching around here yesterday in this particular area. But now they're over here this morning. My sources told me they're here at Long Hollow Baptist Church, which is, uh, you know, more easterly. They're going more easterly on Long Hollow Pike. Have they already exhausted their area here and really checked the area, you see there's like a stream there in the woods area and all up and along the woods. Let's look at the, there you go. See, the prophets live right here. Boom. This area. And they were all searching in this type of area yesterday. Look at this massive amount of land. But now they're down here. They're down here. Stay, they're, they're, their command center is down here, I'm told. Long Hollow Baptist Church. So what is the plan today? To do all this area? To do all this area? So they're going to do like certain grid areas like this area here. And then the next day this. What's the next plan? Are they going to go here? Or are they going to go all the way out to Gallatin? Are they going to go all the way out to Gallatin? We talked about Gallatin. The uh, uh, Bower Sox live there. This is where the supposed glasses were uh, found. By the way, they put out the alert that said that the glasses were uh, not Sebastian Rogers. They actually tweeted out the authorities that they're not. They were out there, folks. They were out there yesterday. Real professional searches. Searches. Searchers. They were out there looking around for this young man, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. Seth out there. Just as much as law enforcement doing what he can legally do. Put Sebastian's name out there. Talk, 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 talk. Share about Sebastian. 
emphasize that Sebastian needs to be found. Her is not doing anything. She's not doing anything that we can see publicly. There's a photo of her with a flyer in her hand. Where is she handed out flyers? Why isn't she initiating searches? Why isn't she going on Good Up Morning America and all the platforms? Why isn't she talking? Why? And then law enforcement. Blood, sweat, and tears out there going through this treacherous terrain. Remember, they had a tornado up there. So different points around there, a lot of trees are down at certain places. They had some vicious storms up there. In uh, December of 2023, glasses that were found by the Bower Sox do not belong to Sebastian. So we don't know if Sebastian really has his glasses on or not. Or, you know, whatever happened to Sebastian, was he wearing his glasses or not? Law enforcement. See that? Out there. Out there. They're searching. They're searching. Will he be searching through the weekend? Will this search end today? It's interesting. Uh, we have a group. <laughs> our meme game is strong in our group. There's people posting memes of Chris Proudfoot almost daily in our group. Lock him up. There's generally people who want to be locked up. And as Seth keeps talking on these podcasts and sharing more about what was going on in that home, the prophet's home, more and more people are saying, lock Chris up, lock him up. What is up with all these CPS investigations? What is up with the discipline and what was happening with Sebastian and Chris Proudfoot's daughter? What was going on with that? I even shared a meme. This is my uh, meme that I shared from another group. I didn't make this meme. Let's make this crystal clear. And I, here's the quote. We can't answer that, sir, due to the ongoing investigation. For Chris Proudfoot. Yeah. He wants to make this crystal clear. And I, and I make a joke out of this because we all see the BS. Our crystal ball, our crystal ball sees the BS on this case. We're not dumb. And I can tell you folks, TikTokers, YouTubers, internet sleuths, social media personalities, people with big platforms, Facebook groups, we are not going away. We're not going away. And if the prophets think this is going away, they are sadly, sadly mistaken. This is not going to go cold with the internet. It's not going to go cold with the internet. The internet at this point, it, at this point, the, the dams have broke. Literally, the dams have broke. It, it, the, the pipes busted. The floodgates have opened. Maybe the law enforcement might end up if they don't find Sebastian to scale down searches, whatever. But the internet is full speed ahead. So maybe that's one of the reasons why the Proudfoots fled their home. You know, a neighbor told me. I asked the neighbor. I know I'm going to keep this neighbor anonymous. I, got, I talked to a few of the neighbors. Uh, love the neighbors. And the neighbor told me. I said, uh, hello, did the Proudfoots move to Memphis? Because there's, a, there's an article by the Tennessean saying that they moved to Memphis. Did you guys see that article? I'll share that in a minute too. So I asked the neighbor, are, are they still home? Uh, neighbor says, I keep, can't, I keep seeing that, but can't get it verified. We would all love that <laughs> if, they, if they left. They are not here and have not been, uh, and have been gone for several days now. But I have not heard that they moved. Maybe that explains all the people at their house over the weekend and all the cars in the driveway. That would be a relief to our neighborhood for sure if they moved. That would be a relief for our neighborhood for sure if they moved. Coming from a neighbor. They don't like them. I think there's one neighbor that 
might like them. But most of them don't. Most of them blame the Proud Foots for this mess. This is a mess. It doesn't make sense. It's a mess. But at the same time, folks, some neighbors are a little bit pissed off about what's going on. Might be pissed off at all of us. Everyone that shares Sebastian, this whole case. Because their neighborhood is being like, it's, it's almost like their neighbor, their the prophet's home is now becoming a crime tourist attraction too. Not only we're, not only, you know, we've already talked about people generally out there want to search, want to see, curious. But now you got people that want to come and see the Proudfoot home. And come check it out. And as Sebastian remains missing, I believe it's going to continue. The Proudfoots are cursed, literally. Concerns about internet sleuths surface in search for missing teen Sebastian Rogers. The search for Sebastian Rogers continues and it is not getting any easier. Some in the community are starting to feel internet sleuths are becoming too invasive. Multiple law enforcement agencies are involved in the search for the missing Sumner County teen and civilians are doing the same to help bring the young boy home. The Sumner County Sheriff's Office said that they do not want to leave a stone unturned. So they went out in Sumner County searching Wednesday as volunteers were handing out flyers to keep Sebastian's name and image in the public eye. Rob Schwitt lives in Sebastian's neighborhood and he has a daughter with autism. Because it could be my daughter that walked away and disappeared without a trace, said Schmidt. Schmidt says it's been very difficult five weeks for the community. However, he also adds it's been very invasive for the neighborhood. He explains there's both law enforcement, but also random vehicles coming through the streets. They have been people coming in almost daily, and they've had to report them to the sheriff's office, said Schmidt. They've come in, TikTokers that are nationally known, trying to get pictures of the family. And so they've been flying drones over houses. Folks, I wouldn't fly any drones over the house, anyone's house. I think in the state of Tennessee, that is illegal. Unless you have a commercialized private li uh, pilot license. If you're just a regular person, don't, get, don't, don't fly drones over people's homes. I wouldn't do it. It's a crime. You get caught. You're going to be known as a peeping Tom if you fly a drone over someone's house. Don't fly drones over people's houses. Stay within the law when you're out there, volunteers. Stay within the law. Don't fly drones over people's homes. But yeah, the neighbors are like, yeah, they understand. See, it's a, it's a, it's a delicate balancing act. Really, it is because people get it. People get it. People want answers. But at the same time, people want their privacy or they want their peace. So it is, it, there's a balance here. What is the balance? But it, this is coming, this, it's, it's like the Prophet's images keep going out and Seth is out there sharing, sharing. And every time Seth, Seth shares more things, more things come out into light. And I think there's strategic moves for everyone. The way they're, they're, they're doing this case. At the, oh, at the end of the day, I think everybody wants to know what happened to Sebastian. Not only for him to be found, everybody wants him to be found safe. And I, I still honestly think, you know, being at this case and being there, I actually think there's a possibility he could still be alive. I really do. At first I didn't. But I think there's a chance he could still be alive. But everybody wants Sebastian found. But it's not going to be that, it, it, it's not going to end there. It's going to be like, what happened to him that transpired for him to do? Because everyone sees his image and a lot of families out there, mama bears and people, they have kids with autism. So it reminds people of their own children. And the whole national, whole na nation, or the whole world is like rallying behind Sebastian. All the prophets would have been mistaken. If the prophets are involved, and I think they are, I think most of you do, some people don't, their actions speak, you know, louder than words. I think the prophets are clearly involved in this. But oh, if their master plan was just to say, oh yeah, this, 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 this kid ran off as a runaway, mark him on as a runaway on the National Children Exploited website, 
He's a runaway, that's it, all forgotten. Oh, they were sadly mistaken. They were sadly mistaken. Because now Sebastian's image is everywhere. And it's not going away. So, will we see, ladies and gentlemen, law enforcement side by side with the Proudfoots? Doubtful. What are the Proudfoots going to do at this point moving forward? Where are they going to go? Are they going to return back to the neighborhood? I'm told they're not there. The only thing that's there is that truck. Katie's uh, truck. But my sources also told me Katie got a new truck before this incident happened. So I'm looking a little bit into that. Does anyone know about Katie switching vehicles and getting new vehicles, another change of vehicle prior to Sebastian being missing? Or some in that time frame? I'm trying to get key details on that. Does anyone know that? Does anyone know that? Again, folks, if you're just coming in, join our group. This is what this group is, basically, is a depot of information in reference to the Sebastian Rogers case. This is in real time. You can see what here. Let me just let me just refresh it, refresh the screen. And in this group, folks, all we do is talk about Sebastian Rogers, the players and participants, the searches, and we got good stuff. We got good stuff. And we just keep talking about it. Sebastian, people talk about the Proudfoots. We talk about the searches that are going on. And remember, folks, while these law enforcement searches are going on, volunteers are still meeting at Rudders, which is down south of Hendersonville, doing their own independent searches. So you have law enforcement doing their searches, and you still have volunteers out there doing their searches too. Proudfoots could be anywhere. Or um, Proudfoots could be anywhere, yes. Sebastian could be anywhere. Sebastian could be anywhere. Kids just don't vanish. Oh, I got some new information. I got some new information about, is this a, look at this. So here's what's going on. Here's what's going on this weekend in Hendersonville. And it says, good morning, everyone. I am a local street preacher with children in Sumner County Schools. Some of you may know me as the one who sued Sumner County government over the mask mandates. My daughter went to school with Sebastian in middle school. Let me cut right to the chase. I believe most of us know what has happened here. I will be organizing to stand at the entrance of the streets of Indian Lake this coming Saturday, April 6th, starting at 12 p.m. We will be holding signs calling for first of the repentance of Chris Proudfoot for his behaviors over this the years and his lies, and for law enforcement bringing him in. The bite mark scratched on his arms just days after Sebastian's disappearance, testimony from ex-wives with allegations of child a ABUSE, CPS being called to his home multiple times, and a child just vanishing into th thin air without a trace. He's hiding something, and we believe so is the mom. Join us if you feel the need. JR will be there at some point as well to spread the word. And this is happening, folks, um, at noon on Saturday. Noon on Saturday, this location. So if you're in the area and you want to show support, go on out there. I might stop by and say hi, document, see what's going on. There's people out there, and they're informing the public. These are local activists now. So that will be interesting. Uh, Nancy Grace spoke uh, to Seth Rogers last night. Good clips. Polygraph. Chris won't take a polygraph. He's ducking. He's ducking. But even though polygraphs aren't admissible, whatever, some people say it's junk science, whatever like that. Still, why won't you take a polygraph? But I even went to the farther extent. Look, look at this. Because also in that segment, also in that segment, Seth Rogers is telling Nancy Grace, I offered a polygraph. He offered a polygraph test. Seth Rogers. And TBI won't give him one. So Seth is basically telling law enforcement, give me a polygraph. Give me. I want a polygraph. He wants to clear his name once and for all. But what's interesting is, and I put this tweet out, because the, you know, Craddock, deputy sheriff there, Put out and said, no stone left unturned. We will find out what happened to Sebastian. No stone left unturned. 
No stone left unturned. Well, I put this tweet out and I said, he said, we are committed to leaving no stone unturned. And I said, if that's the case, why hasn't Chris Proudfoot taken a polygraph? Or has he? Why hasn't Seth Rogers taken a polygraph? Or has he? Why haven't forensics checked the Proudfoot's vehicles and home? Or have they? No stone left unturned, right? So if, the sh if, the, if, the, if law enforcement is saying no stone left unturned, then why is Proudfoot saying that he didn't take a polygraph? And why is Seth saying they didn't, he didn't take a polygraph? Shouldn't you do no stone un left unturned? Shouldn't you forensics different places? Or is the stone left unturned just tall? Hopefully it's not. Hopefully it's not. I mean, if you're going to do these no stone left unturned, what does stone, no stone left unturned mean to you? What does it mean to you? It means by all means necessary, everything. You tear the whole house apart. You flip everything upside down till you look every nook and cranny. But if you're not doing certain things, then there is no stone left unturned. Just my opinion. Check everything. All right, guys, I'm safe. I'm going. I'm traveling. I'm going. So I'll see you guys up there in Tennessee. I'll be doing some live streams, certain areas, doing videos, doing reenactments and, you know, bringing awareness to Sebastian. Uh, if you want to talk or you want to share some information with me about this case to get things out there, you know, I do vet. But JLR at JLR Investigates, reach out to me. I'll put the uh, my email in the description of this video. We are Sebastian's army. No stone. Left on left unturned, what we can legally do. Um, hopefully, we're making a difference. All right, have a good day, everyone. We'll talk soon. JLR investigates. Be safe.